Uh, over the next 20 to 30 minutes or so, we're going to go through reaching new audiences online. Uh, it's a topic that we've covered a couple time, a couple times in our webinar. A couple of our users have asked us to do a recorded version for our YouTube channel. So here it is, reaching new audiences online. Uh, my name is Connor Kelly. I am the Charity Training and Development Manager at Local Giving. Uh, and what we're going to be going through today are a couple of topics around reaching new audience online, expanding the reach that your organization has on your social media channel and on the internet, and basically setting the scene and the case for why investing time in your social media strategy and your social media networks can pay dividends in the long run uh, by leading to more fruitful online fundraising campaigns. So the topics that we're going to cover include what is social media and why is it important? How to identify your supporters' common interests? How to discover new networks online? How to then uh, drive engagement with those networks online? How to convert those uh, online supporters into online donors? And then some information about local giving. Uh, finally, I'm happy to provide some of our contact information so that you can send us questions by email or call in to our help desk. So, first things first, what is social media and why is it important? So, I thought it'd be useful to share two definitions from the Oxford Dictionary. The first is social media itself, and Oxford defines it as websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. So, essentially, it is a way for you to share content, share ideas, and engage in a dialogue with other individuals online or indeed other organizations, other charitable causes online. Social networking is defined as the use of dedicated websites and applications to interact with other users or to find people with similar interests to one's own. So essentially, it's putting that first definition into practice and using websites like Facebook or Twitter or other online social networking platforms to share content and to engage in a conversation with other individuals. So it's currently the number one reason that people use the internet. Uh, some interesting stats about social media are over 38 million active social media users in 2016. So that's over 63% of the entire population. And I would imagine that figure is rising. Uh, what's really interesting for us is that population actively use mobile phones and mobile de devices to access social media on the go. So that's people you know, on their commute to work in the morning, on their lunch break, or sitting at home uh, in their living rooms. The average user spends around one hour and 29 minutes on social media every single day. So that's actually over half, as I said, half the time that people spend online is on sites like Twitter and Facebook. And what I think is really interesting, particularly for us in the not-for-profit charity sector, is that we've seen significant growth in older generations using social media over the last five years. I think there's a misconception sometimes that this is a millennial or a young person's sort of phenomenon, uh, but that actually doesn't bear out in the stats. We're seeing significant growth in all demographics, all age groups using social media, using sites like Twitter and Facebook. So it's a great opportunity for all organizations uh, to engage with all of the sort of types of supporters that they may have. So, how do I identify your supporters' common interests? What we really encourage our groups to do on local giving is to look at online social media strategies and online fundraising strategies as really two and one of the same, and to look at, at trying to take their supporters on a journey that encapsulates engaging with their social media platforms and then donating online, rather than just looking at it as an opportunity to ask people for donations. It's a little bit more tricky than that, but if you invest time in this uh, sort of long-term strategy, it will pay off in the long run far more. So what we encourage people to do is to look at taking people on a four-step journey that includes discover, engage, invest, and endorse. So discover is sort of the first step. The supporter 
discovers your online social media platform. It might be a Facebook page, it might be your Twitter page, it might be a newsletter email that they've signed up to. The next step is engage. That's when they share content, read content, like content, and start to uh, engage with what you're putting up online, starting to interact with the content that you share on Facebook or the content that you share in your newsletter or on another social media platform. The next step is the one that I guess we're most interested in is invest. That's when the person goes to local giving and actually makes a donation during the campaign or just in a spur of the moment after being uh, sort of inspired by the content that you put out online. The last step, which I think is actually the most important step, is endorse. That's when the person who's made a donation tells their friends and family that they just made a donation and asks them to donate too. This step can also include people signing up to a regular direct debit, so giving every month, or it could also include them setting up a local giving fundraiser page and actually raising money themselves for you. So with that first step in mind, uh, discovering and engaging with your social media platforms, we recommend that you try and think about who are the typical people that are interested in what I do, what uh, would make them interested in my charity. So some things you could think about are what are their hobbies and interests, and what makes it, what is it about their charity, about your charity, sorry, that they find interesting. What would motivate them to donate? What is it that your charity would have to do to make that person think this is something that I want to invest my money in? <clears throat> what is the level of engagement they have with your charity? Is it something that they check uh, regularly on social media? Is it something that they come along to in person? What is the sort of level of engagement that you have with your typical supporters? And finally, what income do you think they'd be able to spare? What is the most realistic uh, amount to ask for? Is it worth having a campaign where you ask for a few people to give quite a large donation, or would it be better to, in, to um, invest time in a campaign that asks lots of people to give small amounts. And that all goes down to what your charity does, the size of your charity, and the level of engagement that you have with your supporters. If you have a couple of core supporters who are really engaged with what you do and you think would be able to afford you know, a 50 or 100 pound donation, then run a campaign that reaches out to them and, and looks for a donation on that side. If you're a, cam, a, a community group or a charity that have a large network of lots of people who are kind of invested in the work that you do, maybe it would be better to do a campaign where you ask for a smaller amount, but you ask for lots of people to get involved and sort of spread your message far and wide. So how do we discover new networks online? So two quick, easy things you can do off the back of this uh, YouTube video is go to Facebook and type in your local area. So I've used an example here on the left of typing in a local area to me in London, Bethnal Green, and look at all the various groups and pages that have been set up to do with that local area. So you'll see on that list, there are loads of Facebook groups of people who live and work in Bethnal Green. What I really encourage groups to do is to do that for their local area and then join those groups, ask the administrator of the groups, can you post content in them, <coughs> and then regularly post updates and information about what you do, the work that your charity does, information about your charity in those groups. That's a ready way for you to reach lots of people in your local area who are most likely interested in the work that you're doing and the benefits that your charity has for the local community. You don't just have to do it for your local area. You can also do it for your cause. So if you're a homelessness charity or a mental health charity or a cancer research charity, whatever it may be, search for the topic in Facebook and then join one of hundreds, if not thousands of groups that are set up to deal with the charitable cause that you may have. Uh, like I said, contact the administrator and ask them, can you uh, post content? And what you'll find is a whole group full of people who have already expressed an interest in the cause or expressed an interest in your local area. And they're the types of people that you can then start pitching interesting content to.
Another quick and easy step is to go to Twitter, search hashtag your local area, or indeed hashtag the cause that you support, so mental health or homelessness, and then follow other organizations that deal with similar issues or that work in a similar area. <coughs> try and engage with them online, tag them in posts, try and start a dialogue with them, but also just look at the sort of content that they put up and try and learn from and replicate what they do and apply it to your own uh, social media channels. In general, I'd really encourage groups to do a couple of things when they're putting out content. The first, and you'll see in these sample posts, is always include visual content. We have a blog on our website at the moment, on localgiving.org, that talks about the importance of visual content in social media posts. And it's something amazing like 40% more likely to be engaged with if it includes a photo or a video. So whenever you're posting on Twitter or Facebook, make sure you include a link that has an image or make sure that you upload a photo as part of the post. You'll know from your own social media pages that as you're just scrolling through Facebook or scrolling through Twitter, it takes something to pop out uh, for you to stop and actually read the content. Something that's visual is a really great tool that you can use to make people sort of stop and engage with what you've just said and read the post that you just Another tip is to include other organizations in your post. So you'll see the example on the left has tagged uh, a supporter on Local Giving itself. Local Giving will see that tweet and reshare it. You can also do that with your local CBSs or CBCs. You can also do that with other organizations that might help you, <coughs> businesses that might support you, you name it. Uh, another thing you can do is get involved in national campaigns. So you'll see uh, the example on the right is getting involved with the BBC Pudsey campaign and sharing out uh, some information about that. And the last thing that we'd really recommend is to get involved just in general hashtag campaigns. So the example on the left, just using the hashtag passionate uh, and hashtag generate. Finally, uh, always include a link to where people can donate if you're running a online fundraising campaign. So that example in the middle has included the link to where people can go and make a donation to the Friends of Foundries. So if you're in campaign mode and you're actually looking for donations, make sure to always include a local giving link in all of your social media posts. What we'd really encourage groups to do is to engage with what, what we call influencers online. So an influencer is someone who has a large reach on social media and who by sharing or liking your post can reach a larger audience than you would normally be able to. So a couple examples of this. First one on the left is Bright Light, Bright Right. He is a famous musician who has worked with Elton John and just happens to be a close personal friend of someone at Local Giving, we asked them uh, if he would be interested in becoming a sort of influencer or ambassador for Local Giving Online. He agreed, and now whenever we run a campaign, he retweets and shares amongst his own followers about the Local Giving campaign in question. So you'll see when I took that screenshot, <coughs> because Bright Light, Bright Light had shared it, 118 people had liked it. 11 people had shared it. So just by getting him involved, we were able to reach a whole new audience of people, his fans who like his Facebook page. Another brilliant example is over on the left. This is a group in London, the Happy Hippie Foundation. They were running an appeal on local giving. And because they were engaging with various celebrities and different sort of campaigns that were being run on Twitter and Facebook, they caught the attention of Miley Cyrus, the famous pop star, who then uh, liked and shared their post. And because she has such an enormous reach on social media, you'll see when I took this screenshot, something like 15,000 people had seen, had liked, sorry, their um, local giving appeal post. Uh, 400 people had commented on it and 200 people had shared it. So we saw a flurry of donations coming off the back of that. Just from that group being really active on social media and catching the attention of a famous influencer. What's worth bearing in mind is that because we're local charities, 
because we're small community groups, it might be difficult for us to engage with someone like Miley Cyrus or a pop star. But that doesn't mean that you can't engage with influencers. A really quick, easy influencer you can engage with online are your local politicians. So that might be your local MP or your local councillor. And you'll see a couple of posts here that I've taken screenshots of, of local MPs <coughs> sharing campaigns on social media or their constituents sharing information about the local MP supporting a local giving charities appeal. Um, these are quick and easy because your local councillor and your local MP will have a large social media following. They'll be followed by all the local press, all the local newspapers and local radio stations. And so it's just a really quick, easy way for you to get someone in your local community with a large reach to share and like your content. Most uh, local politicians are happy to do this. Uh, you can do it just by contacting them directly on social media. Uh, but if you want to do it in a more sort of organized fashion, you could just send an email to their local constituency office and ask them would they give you a hand promotion of your next campaign on social media. Other influencers that you could tap into include local business. The local businesses usually have a large social media following. It could be local giving. If you tag local giving in a post, we'll reshare it for you. Uh, it could be your local CVS or another organization that uh, helps your charity. It could be local newspapers and radio stations themselves. They usually have quite active Facebook and Twitter pages. So try and see if they'd be willing to share your post for you. It could be other organizations like schools, colleges, sports clubs, the local council office, a, another charity in your local area, a larger charity that uh, sort of does what you do but on a national scale. It could be local people who just happen to have a large social media uh, following. It could be local bloggers. It could be community leaders or other people in your area that you know have a lot of influence on Twitter and Facebook. These are all people that you could ask all people you can tag, all people you can try and get to engage with your content so that what you post will reach a wider audience if they share it for you online. So how to drive engagement online. A couple quick tips. Make sure your social media platforms are linked to your website and vice versa. Make sure your website is linked onto your social media platform. Make sure that people can move between your website and the different sites that you run including your local giving page, easily and quickly, so that if they want to go to your Twitter page and follow you, <coughs> they want to go to your Facebook page and like you, if they want to go to your local giving page and donate, they can do that from your website and vice versa. Add links to your Facebook and Twitter page in your email signature. So if you have an email signature that says, you know, uh, Connor Kelly, Training and Development Manager at Local Giving, my email address, my telephone number, always include links to where people can follow you on Twitter, or like you on Facebook, and indeed, also giving credit itself. Always remember to include these links in all of your correspondence. So if you send out a newsletter, if you send out emails to supporters or partners or service users, always include links to where they can sign up to follow you on Twitter, or like you on Facebook, or make a donation on local. Make sure that no one is ever left wanting to know how they can find out more information. Whenever you send out correspondence in any form, make sure that you're always including information about your various platforms. So first thing to remember, and I think one, probably the most important slide in this webinar, is that it doesn't take a huge budget to do this. Creating engaging content that's easy to use is more about creating things that are authentic and that tell a story to your supporters. So just remember that social media is a two-way conversation. You're trying to get the people who support your organization to interact and share with information about your charity. So the best way to do this is to tell a story through videos, through infographics, through photos of the work that you do. Uh, if you want to share information about what your organization does, it doesn't have to come from you know, a marketing manager or a communications team. All it has to do all has to be is a little bit of information about what you did recently and a photo of you doing it. If you can't do a photo, try and create an infographic, like a poster that gives some key stats about the information about what you've done. This can be uh, quite challenging sometimes for groups. I think 
sometimes it's just a it's just like a first hurdle you have to get over and as soon as you start doing it and posting regularly it becomes second nature but if you're looking for inspiration look at what other organizations are doing so if you're a homelessness charity in leeds look at what the homeless charities in manchester are sharing to their supporters <coughs> if you're a mental health charity in west london look at what the mental health charities in edinburgh are doing and try and learn from other organizations and replicate what they do and then apply it to your local area and apply it to your own social media platforms and remember that it's not necessarily about the number of people that it reaches so it's all well and good if you have a thousand followers on twitter but what's more important is the number of people that engage with the content that you put out so getting 10 people to share a twitter post or getting 50 people to like it it is sort of demonstrative that people are finding the content that you're putting out interesting and that's when the sort of uh, gear should start kicking into motion and that's when you should start thinking about converting those people into donors and um, make it easy for stakeholders to get involved so that can be as simple as telling your trustees that you have this social media platform asking them to like and share it asking them to get their own networks involved with it um, couple of quick steps would be to make sure everyone in the organization that you have a direct access to is linked up. So not just trustees, but service users, volunteers, staff. Make sure everyone in the organization knows that you have a new Twitter page or that you have a Facebook page and that this is where they can go to like it. And once you have them all signed up, it's really about driving more connections from the current supporter base that you've built up. So remember that the best people to get to sort of be ambassadors for you online are the people who are directly connected with your organization. So volunteers, service users, staff. If they share a post saying, this is the center that I go to every Friday, or this is the center that I volunteer with, it's far more likely that their friends and family will engage and like you in return. <coughs> and just remember to provide content that's easy for them to share. So a, a photo or a poster that sort of demonstrates what you do it's far more likely to be picked up upon and to be shared. So a couple of quick examples. Um, we talked a little bit about an infographic or a poster. But I just wanted to share this example of what Halifax Street Angels do. So this is a charity that helps people who are uh, living on the streets. Uh, and every week what they do is put out this infographic that they call the Weekend Report. And you'll see they'll talk about the total number of volunteer hours that they did this week. So it was 234 when I took this screenshot. The total number of uh, people that they've given support to. So it was 37. The total number of hot drinks they've handed out. Pairs of flip flops that, flip that they've handed out, etc. So this group spent a bit of time putting this poster together. And then once a week, they update the figures and then reshare it out to their supporters. I think it's a really brilliant way for their supporters online to see the impact of what this group does regularly, to see those numbers go up, and to see the, the, the amount of work that they do in their community, and to really engage with the story that is Halifax Street Angels Weekend Report. So it took a bit of time to put this infographic together, I'm sure, but then after that, it's literally just a case of them going in, updating the figures, and then sharing it out with their social media followers. And their followers will expect to see that every week, and you know, be interested in see, to see what's happened this week, how many people have they helped, is their impact growing, this is something that I want to support. Another thing to bear in mind with social media, uh, and I, I'm going to use the post on the right here as an example, is that if you can do something weird or wacky, it's far more likely to be engaged with. If you can make something fun and sort of silly, people will engage with it on social media. A really good example is this charity that one of their staff has a pet owl, Murray, uh, and as a joke, all of their social media posts uh, supposedly come out from Murray the Owl and in the voice of Murray the Owl and include a lot of different photos of Murray. Uh, and it's just a sort of silly way uh, for people to engage with what the charity does. Murray updates them with what's going on and tells them about the work that the charity does. And obviously, because it's a bit silly, because it's a cute owl, <coughs> people engage with what they do like and follow uh, and share. So I'd actually encourage everybody to follow Murray the Owl themselves. It's really a really fun way to keep up to date with that local charity.
Um, just remember to uh, story and to share content that people will find interesting. So the first example over on the left is Baby uh, Bank Facebook group, uh, Baby Bank Network's Facebook page, who are introducing one of their volunteers and sort of sharing a photo of the volunteer uh, at work. So it's a really cute photo um, and it, it sort of tells a story in itself after introducing the volunteer to the network and sort of just putting up a, a post that supporters would find interesting and engaging. The example over on the right is a local PTA who uh, are sharing a news article about the need for fewer exams in education. Um, so this is just a good example of a group that might not necessarily have a photo to share this week or a significant update, but they're keeping their supporters interested in what they do by sharing a news article that's relevant to what they do. So they're a PTA and they're sharing a news article from The Guardian about a recent development in um, education. So same goes for you. If you're a homelessness charity, if you're a mental health charity, if you're a women's advocacy charity and you don't know what to share, look through The Guardian, The Times, different news sources and try and share and comment on uh, news or reports or government <coughs> government statements that relate to what you do. Being is that if you're a mental health charity, the people who have liked shared your page are interested in mental health issues. So if you can be a place that they go to find out news and reports and sort of comment on that, you're far more likely to keep them engaged uh, and you're far more likely to have them come to you as a, as a trusted news source um, on their social media pages. So how to convert online supporters into online donors. Remember to think of that. So got them to discover your page. You've got them to engage with content, maybe through an influencer. Now you're trying to get them to invest. So remember that it's the people that have been liking and sharing your page for the last couple of weeks or months <coughs> that are the people who are most likely to make a donation. So always launch campaigns of interesting content. Uh, a picture of a service user, like one on the left, walking and link visiting schemes at a Christmas Day lunch. They were asking people to donate to it. They included a link to where people can go and make a donation on local giving. And that photo is of the previous year, happy volunteer with a happy service user, eye-catching content that really tells a story and shows uh, the value of what a donation on local giving would achieve for that group. Over on the right, we have a fundraiser. Tomorrow's Women, this was a charity head shave event. They included a link to where someone could go and make a donation on local giving. And they also told a story of a before and after photo of the supporter and the fundraiser, sorry, um, taking part in that challenge. And obviously that tells, that photo tells a story, shows to the people on social media uh, what this uh, fundraiser is doing, shows them the sort of impact that, um, that their campaign is going to have and always includes that link to where people can make a donation, as I said earlier. Um, remember that uh, newsletters are really key for fundraising asks. So uh, only a percentage of your Facebook followers will actually see your posts. That's the nature of social media. So remember that you can highlight that a campaign is coming up on Facebook, regularly update people with how the campaign is going, how much you've raised, how long is left but that a newsletter is really a key way to actually ask people to make a donation. So as you're promoting your campaigns on social media, try and send out a newsletter with a direct ask. Uh, it's far more likely that people will click on an email and actually go through to where they can make a donation on local giving. That's not to say that social media isn't key to campaigns, but it's just that social media is more about raising awareness that the campaign is going on uh, and a newsletter is sometimes more effective in actually asking people to go through and make the donation itself. Uh, remember to acknowledge uh, people that made a donation. Make sure that you're creative with thanking people, thank them on social media, thank them in an email, uh, thank supporters, uh, groups who help you, so maybe a local business or a local community group, thank the fundraisers who help you, thank volunteers that help you, Thank people just for sharing the content, if, uh, even if they didn't make a donation. 
and always make sure that you share your teams. Make sure that you tell people how much it is uh, and what sort of demonstrate to them what the funding will go towards. Show them a photo of what it's going to fund. Tell them some information about the project that the money that they've given uh, is going to go towards. <coughs> Here are some examples of groups thanking um, you know, an anonymous donor on that local giving, thanking uh, the fundraiser, uh, resharing um, the fundraiser's page, and thanking them for making that effort. So that was uh, a group in Northampton thanking their fundraiser, Nick, and sharing his local giving page. Remember that if you make that experience a uh, positive one for people on online, they're more likely to do that final step, which is endorse you and tell their own friends and family. So you'll see this post, uh, I support Oscar. This is their local giving page. Help the Land Art Festival. I made a wee donation. This is where you can do one too. Uh, and again, a volunteer sharing their experience with the local charity and then sharing where people can go to make a donation on local giving. So finally, information about local giving. So if you're not a member of local giving, you can join now. And what's really worth bearing in mind is that we're far more than just a donation platform. We are a resource and a membership body for the local charity sector across the UK. If you join local giving, you don't just get a place to receive donations. You get access to loads of resources and guides around social media, around online fundraising, which includes templates that you can use for local press releases, for newsletters, or for emails. So you'll see in our fundraising and our resources page loads of tips and guides and advice and examples of how to run fundraising campaigns, how to engage with people online. It's meant to be a quick and easy fundraising toolkit for local charities to use. Uh, membership costs 96 bucks for 12 months, but through that you get a local giving page for 12 months, which will be able to receive one-time and monthly donations that we process and then pass to you. It will also give you access to our match fund campaigns. So we regularly run campaigns where we, where we can double the donation that you receive online, the most famous of which is called Grow Your Tenor, and that's where we double £10 donations. You can read more about those campaigns on our website. Uh, membership will allow you to run crowdfunding style appeals. So they're short, snappy, issue-based or project-based appeals where you ask people to fund your next project or an urgent need for funding that you have. And they allow you to sort of focus in on a particular need that you have. They're usually sensitive and target-based. So that means that you're able to go out to your supporters and say, you know, we have 10 days to raise a thousand pounds, this is where you can donate on local giving and supporters can keep up to date with how much you raised and how many days are left in the campaign. You can also have an unlimited amount of fundraisers. So a fundraiser need is when an individual or a group of individuals set up a page that they manage. They usually take on a challenge like a marathon or we saw that example earlier of a head shave. Uh, they sort of run that page themselves and they get donations from their own friends and family but all the money is linked to your local giving account and we transfer it over to you automatically. With local giving, you also get one-to-one -one support and I'll share some information about our help desk. You're free to call in and speak to a trained and experienced fundraiser to get some advice or tips around online fundraising. Finally, we have in-depth reporting for finance and marketing. So reports that you can download which break down the donations that you receive and the payments that we've made to your account as well as a marketing report that you can download with a list of donors who have opted into communications. <coughs> so that local giving help desk number is 0300-111-2340. It's open 9.30 to 5.30, Monday to Friday. You'll get through to a trained fundraiser. We'd be happy to talk you through your next campaign or explain any issues that you're having with your social media accounts or with your local giving page. You can also email us at help at localgiving.org. We aim to get back to people within one working day. That's it for me. Uh, this video was obviously posted on our YouTube page. Uh, if you would like a copy of the slides, just email us and I'm happy to provide them. Uh, but please know, as I said, you can call us on 0300 
111-2340, email us at help at localgiving.org, and follow us on Twitter at localgiving. Thanks for coming along. Hope you found this useful.